Good morning, boys and girls. I'm glad to see you this morning. We're going to sing for our first hymn today, one we haven't sung in a long time. Worthy of worship, worthy of praise. You know, when you say somebody's worthy, that means they're worth something. And God is worth everything to us. And he's worthy of honor. He's an honorable person. And he's um, worthy of all the offerings that we bring him. He's our father. He loves you and me and cares for us. He's our creator. He made us. These are all things we're going to learn in our hymn today. He's our savior. He loved us so much that he sent Jesus to die for us. He's our creator. He made you and me. He's our savior. And he's our sustainer. He's the glue that holds us together. Remember, that's what sustainer means when we're having a bad day. And he's wonderful. So he's worthy of all our worship and praise. Sing with me. I've got the words in case you've forgotten. Worthy of worship, worthy of praise, worthy of honor and glory, worthy of all the glad songs we can sing, worthy of all of the offerings we bring, you are worthy, Father, Creator, you are worthy, Savior, Sustainer, you are worthy, worthy and wonderful, worthy of worship and praise. Now, if we'd sung some more verses to that, we would have heard that he's also trustworthy. We can trust God that he wants the very best for us all the time. And so people that we can trust when they tell us to do something, we need to obey them. So let's sing together, trust and obey. And you can do the motions if you know them, but I'm going to show you the words in case you've forgotten. Trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey. Let's try it again. Trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus, but to trust and obey. Now, boys and girls, um, we do need to trust God, and as we trust Him, we need to ask Him to guide us. And the way he guides us is we, as we study his word. He tells us what he wants us to learn from his word. Uh, used to, he had these prophets, and we're going to learn how the people didn't always uh, listen to what the prophets said. And sometimes people don't listen to God's word, and that's when they get in trouble. And so we need to stay in God's word every day. And when I say stay in it, I mean read it and study it and talk to your parents about it so before we begin our lesson today let's bow our heads and pray our hands we fold our head we bow as we talk to god just now dear god thank you for your true word the bible thank you for what you want to teach us about trusting and obeying you today help us to be good listeners to what you're going to teach us in jesus name amen now, boys and girls, our story today is from 2 Kings chapter 17, verses 1 through 23. You remember, every word in the Bible is true, so this really happened. But before we go into today's lesson, I want us to think back a few minutes about the people, God's people, and what they had been doing. Remember, they had been divided into two kingdoms, the northern kingdom and the southern kingdom. And uh, remember, the people had not been obeying God. You remember we had the story about how last week about how Jezebel had threatened Elijah and how um, he um, God came to him, though, and protected him and, and, and kept him safe. And then uh, the week before that, what had happened? Elijah had showed Ahab who the real true God, Yahweh, is. And um, remember, they had 
put um, the meat on the fire and they called out to Baal, the people that did not believe in the one true God, and no fire came. But when they even put water on the wood and Elijah called out to the one true God, he sent fire, burned up the meat, he burned up the wood, he burned up everything around it, even in the trench, the water. And so we, he showed his mighty power then. And the list could go on and on and on again, how God showed how he had cared for the people. They could think back on what they had heard from their great-grandparents and their grandparents about how God had delivered them from um, slavery in Egypt. But I'm sorry to tell you, the Israelites in the northern kingdom, they kept on worshiping the idols, disobeying God's command, even creating, even making new idols. And the list could go on and on, again and again. The Israelites of the northern kingdom worshiped things other than God. And uh, today we're going to learn about the consequences because this is sin. When we disobey God, it is sin. Hosea was the king of Israel now the nor in the northern kingdom. And he did some very evil things, but he still wasn't as evil as the kings who ruled Israel before him. But one day, you see in the past, the king of Assyria had not bothered the, the Israelite people because Hosea had made a deal with him and was paying him to leave them alone. But one day, the king of Assyria and his army attacked Israel. And so instead of going to God like we should always do, you know, when something's going wrong, we need to go to God's word and see what, and read it and see what he tells us we need to do. And But instead of going to God and talking to God about what to do next, he made a deal with the king of Egypt. Hosea secretly talked to this king and he asked the king of Egypt to protect them from, Israel, from uh, the Israelites from Assyria. Well, when the king of Assyria heard about this, he got very angry and arrested Hoshea and threw him into prison. Well, then the Assyrian army invaded Israel. The army surrounded the whole city of Samaria and they had this big high wall around it. Um, for three years, the Assyrians attacked the city over and over. They didn't let anybody bring supplies to the people. And finally, the king of Assyria captured Samaria and forced the people to leave their home. This meant they had to go into exile, go away from where they lived and all their families. And he bound them together with ropes and hooks and he made them walk hundreds of miles to Assyria. Well, boys and girls, God allowed this to happen because his, he, he exiled his people because they had sinned against him after he had warned them over and over and over again. He had sent the prophets and the prophets had told them that very bad things would happen if they didn't stop worshiping these idols and if they didn't turn back to God. But when the people heard all about this, they sinned even more. So God had had enough. He was angry with his people because of their sin. And he punished the Israelite people by letting their enemies um, take over and force them from their homes. And finally, um, the people of Israel had sinned so much and had ignored God's warnings that finally when God took this action and allowed Assyria to take them into exile, um, God turned away from them and the people were separated from God. Well, when the Israelites disobeyed God, he was judging their sin and punished them by removing them from his presence. That's the worst thing that could ever happen to anyone. But you know what, boys and girls? God loved us so much and his people so much that he sent Jesus who took the punishment for our sin upon him. And when he unites and restores those people 
who ask Jesus to come into their heart, then Jesus brings us into God's presence and keeps us there. We boys and girls want to keep trusting and obeying God. That's what our hymn means. When, to be happy in Jesus is to trust and obey. Because when we trust and obey God and have Jesus in our hearts, we are just drawn close to God. And this is where we want to stay. God sent Jesus to take our punishment for sin so that we would not be separated from him. Now, our big question today was why did God scatter his people? And why did he do it? Because his people had sinned against God and they had to be punished. Well, boys and girls, the good news is the wages of sin is death. In, the, in this case right here, the wages of sin, they were separated from God. But the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus. That means we're never separate. Once we ask Jesus into our hearts, we are with him forever and ever and ever. Because he loved you and me so much, he took our punishment for sin. So I think we've got lots to praise God about today. We've learned that God loves you and me. He loves us. He cares for us. We learn that he's our creator. He's our sustainer. He's king of all kings and lord of all lords. And he's mighty and he's powerful as we saw in the story today. So let's have our popcorn praise now. And remember, if you're at home listening, to just pop those praises off as I pause. And if you're at church, do it at church. I'm so thankful to hear you doing your praising God every Sunday. So let's bow our heads and pray. Dear God, I praise you that you are sovereign God. You're in control of everything. God, you are love. You are our creator. You are our savior and redeemer. You redeemed us. You bought us back from sin and you died on the cross to save us from our sins. You're our sustainer who holds us together when everything around us seems crazy. You are worthy of all our worship and praise. And we could go on praising you forever. But now, dear God, we want to thank you for sending Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for saving my soul. Thank you, Lord, for making me whole. Thank you, Lord, for giving to me thy great salvation so rich and free amen now boys and girls remember we want to read our bible every day so that we know what god wants us to do let's sing i am trusting you to guide me you alone shall lead every day in our supplying all i need let's sing that to close asking god telling god that we trust him I am trusting you to guide me. You alone shall lead. Every day and hour supplying all I need. Have a wonderful day, boys and girls.